Welcome. Let's talk about the idea of simplifying square roots. Let's start by answering the question, what is a square root? We can think of the square root as the inverse of the second exponent. So what do we mean by that? Let's say that we have a number, let's call it three. If we raise that number to the second exponent, we're gonna get us nine. But if we take the square root of nine, we're gonna go back to three. And this is what we mean by being the inverse of the second exponent. Let's take a look at some examples. So here we have examples of what we call perfect squares. And these are numbers that the square root, it's an integer. The square root of one, that is equivalent to one. Because notice what's inside the square root, we want to think of a value that if you multiply itself, gives you what we have inside the square root. Which in this case, that number is one. The square root of four, we can define it as two. Because notice that the value of two, if we multiply itself two times, it gives you the value that we had inside the square root which is four. The square root of nine, we can define it as three. Notice that if we get three and we multiply it by itself two times, we're going to obtain the number that we have inside the square root, which is nine. The square root of 16, we can define it as four because notice that we can take the value of four and if we multiply it by itself two times, it's gonna give us the value that we have inside the square root, which is 16. And if we follow that thinking, the square root of 25, it is equal to five, because notice that five times five, it is equal to the value that we have inside the square root, which is 25. The square root of 36, we can define it as six. Six times six gives you 36. The square root of 49, we can define it as seven. Seven, if we multiply it by itself, it gives you 49. And the square root of 64, we can define that as eight. Notice that eight times eight gives you 64. But now, what if we encounter values that are not so easy to find the square root of. Can we think of a number that if we multiply itself two times, it gives us the value that is inside the square root, which is of 27. And it's not as easy as the one that we have just discussed. So what do we do in these cases where we cannot find a single number that if you multiply by itself, it gives you what we have inside the square root? Well, we got to think about how we can simplify the inside of the square root. And what we have to think about is, would it be possible for me to look at the inside of the square root and write that number as a multiple of values that we do know the square root, which we have defined here as perfect squares. So now let's think about it. Notice that we can write down the value of 27 as nine times three. But why did we chose nine or three? The value of nine, we know the square root of, which is three. So we were able to write the inside as a multiple of a number that we know the square root of. And now that we have identified this, we can apply the rules of roots. And this rule says that if inside the square root, if you're multiplying, it is okay to multiply the square root of each one of them individually. So instead of saying the square root of nine times three, we can say the square root of nine times the square root of three. And the advantage of this is that we know what the square root of nine is. We have to find that as three. So now we can write this down as three times the square root of three and we have properly simplified our square root. Another way to also rewrite this is to just put the three in front of the square root. We can just write this down as three square root of three. So if we cannot find the square root of a value right away, we have to think of ways to rewrite the inside of the square root. Let's take a look at the next example. The square root of 147. There is no number that if you multiply itself, it gives you 100. And 47. So this is an indicator that we need to rewrite the inside of the square root. Well, notice that 147, we can write this down as 49 times three. 
But why do we choose either 49 or 3? Is that we know what the square root of 49 is. We have to find that as 7. So we were able to rewrite the inside of the square root with a number that we know the square root of. And once we have a multiplication inside the square root, we can apply the rules of square root. And the rule says that if you multiply it inside the square root, you can just multiply it the square roots. And now we can just rewrite it as the square root of 49 times the square root of 3. And now we can simplify because don't forget that we know what the square root of 49 is. The square root of 49 is 7. So now we can substitute that with the value of 7. So now we got 7 times the square root of 3, which we can rewrite this as 7 square root of 3. Let's take a look at two more examples. In the following two examples, notice that the values that we have inside the square root are very big, 704 and 256. When we have large numbers inside the square root, and we want to think about ways to rewrite it using multiples of perfect squares, we can use our graphing calculator. Let's get the value that we have inside the square root, 704. And let's start dividing by numbers that we know the square root of. Let's start with 25. Notice that the output, it's a decimal. So that number doesn't work. Let's move to another one. Let's try 36. That's a decimal. Maybe that number doesn't work out. Let's try 49. That's another decimal. That doesn't work out. Let's try 64. That's good. We have a whole number as an output. What we can say now is that the value of 704, we can write it out as 64 times 11. And now that we have a multiplication inside the square root, let's separate the square root by multiplication. We can rewrite this as the square root of 64 times the square root of 11. And we have achieved our objective because now we know exactly what the square root of 64 is. We can write that down as 8. So now we have 8 times the square root of 11. We have simplified our square root. Let's try the same technique, but now with the square root of 256. Let's start by dividing by 49. That doesn't work. We have a decimal. Let's try 64 one more time. Notice that we have an output of 4. So what we can say now is that the value of 256 can be written down as 64 times 4. And now that we're multiplying inside the square root, let's separate them by multiplication. But this is a very interesting outcome because now notice that we do know what the square root of 64, which is 8. And we also know what the square root of 4, which is 2. So now we can write this down as 8 times 2, which is 16. We were able to simplify the square root of 256. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.